Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining the webinar today. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about Industry 4 related communication architecture and the integration of factory assets and communication layers while focusing on OPC UA, which is used as for device interoperability and for efficient data exchange amongst um, consuming applications on both the edge and cloud-based interfaces. So just to give a little bit of background on what a factory hierarchy actually looks like. Um, so for industry four, um, the uh, components of operational technology, which consists of monitoring and control of physical devices and information technology, which is related to the flow of data between applications is critical for implementing industry four in the factory setting. So traditionally there's a disconnect between these two layers in a factory setting. Um, this, this is encompassed by data sharing between the layers. So from the factory floor to the enterprise layer, um, there has to be a flow of information in order to implement all of the characteristics of industry four. So one of the big um, topics of industry four is getting legacy devices and current implementations of devices talking to one another. So there are numerous communication protocols, industrial communication protocols that are used in industry at the moment. This can range from Modbus, BACnet, Profinet. Each, each um, industrial communication protocol has its own strengths and weaknesses and own approaches for implementation in a factory setting. So the, all of these combined protocol implementations make up an aggregated network stack within a factory. So one of the big challenges for SMEs, for IoT integrators, uh, and for enterprise in general is getting legacy data from devices, sharing it amongst other devices, and having a connection between layers. Um, so in order to implement Industry 4, there has to be a focus on solutions that allow for data to be aggregated, gathered, and shared amongst the network. So a solution to this is OPC UA. So in modern times, there's more critical analysis needed for communication speed and scalability within a factory. So requirements for data sharing, for dissemination of data between layers and between devices is critical. So an approach to this is using OPC UA, which is an open source implementation protocol for industrial communication. It's vendor independent and communicate and communicate with legacy um, industrial protocol implementations, as well as using its own um, communication stack. So this is an approach by Industry 4 and IIoT as a communication protocol and uses the client subscriber mechanism and publish subscribe model to exchange data, not only between devices, but between layers within a factory. So the motivation for using OPC UA is to put information that's within the factory floor onto the IT layer and have interoperability between both layers and devices. So this, would, this is essentially encompassed by horizontal and vertical communication, horizontal communication between devices and subnets and vertical communication between the different layers. So enterprise layer, IT layer, and OT layer. One of the big advantages of OPC UA is encryption and authentication, which means that network security is taken away from being developed on the network itself and brought to edge devices. So OPC UA is a standard interface. It's becoming more and more widespread with more availability. Um, so it's, it's a really good choice for implementing within a factory setting. So to give some background to OPC UA's implementation, the RAMI 4.0, which is the reference architecture model for Industry 4 was developed. So this is essentially a hierarchy which bridges the gap between assets and business functionality within a factory. So the life cycle encompassed by RAMI 4.0 goes from all, all assets and all members of the development life cycle from development, design, implementation, um, production and manufacturing. So RAMI 4.0 is essentially encompassing using a single system architecture in order to bring standardization to communication within the factory. And one of the recommendations from RAMBI 4.0 is the asset administration shell, which is essentially a digital representation of an asset within a factory setting. So one of the big challenges in factories is the convergence of 
the operational technology and information technology layers. Traditionally, there's a discontinuity between these two layers. Um, so if, as examples, if you wanna take um, information and, and from devices on the factory floor and store it on an enterprise system uh, for managing databases of manufacturing data, for legacy, um, legacy devices to store their data, for dashboards, uh, reporting implementations, for data analytics, there has to be a, a bridge of the gap between these two layers. This will enable things to happen. This will enable opportunities. Um, for example, performance maintenance, and predictive maintenance based on the data that's actually flowing within the factory settings uh, and, and a comparison of the performance between assets and factories within an enterprise system. So a solution to this is OPC UA, a combination of OPC UA and the asset administration shell. So an asset administration shell is essentially a data structure for storing the digital representation of an asset on a server that can be connected to by multiple clients and share information between them. So as I said, the asset administration shell is a digital representation of an asset. So if you take the example of an RFID module, so you have a multiplexer connected antennas and uh, a protocol. So you would be able to represent all of this within an asset administration shell sitting on a server. So you can have documentation for the products. You can have information on the multiplexer itself, the connected antennas, how many there are, what information is available on the antennas. And all of that information can be connected and shared with any clients that are connected to the server itself. So it's a standard way of representing information amongst clients. Clients can publish their own information, uh, subscribe to data that's already on the network and implement their own applications within the network stack. So one of the big advantages of using an asset administration shell and OPC UA connection is that clients can connect to an already established server, implement their own digital representation, subscribe to data, publish their own data, and have an interconnection, not only between assets that are on the factory floor, but to connect to enterprise layer and analytics and information. So this is uh, basically an implementation we've used in IMR for connecting to legacy devices. Um, so essentially this is communication with hardware, an implementation of the asset administration shell on the server and the application that's running on it with a publish and subscribe mechanism that communicates with the server and each client that's connected can communicate with that piece of hardware and each individual client that's connected to it. Um, so this, this gives an opportunity for edge and cloud application implementations within a factory setting. So you can have different components that are connected to on a factory floor. Each of these can communicate with one another through the OPC UA server that would run on an industrial PC or there are implementations nowadays that have OPC UA server integrated within PLCs and different uh, industrial devices. This could use uh, an OPC UA client that uses a publish and subscribe mechanism for communication between cloud and edge based interfaces and actual factory devices and assets. So by using a publish and subscribe mechanism, there's a fast communication integration for um, there's a, for example, there's legacy data with, where there's latency in the, in the sharing of, uh, of data between devices. So the publish and subscribe mechanism can be used to extract data from one source and implement it on another. So you have a fast communication interface and clients can subscribe and publish information as much as they need to or to an entire stack of information. This enables uh, communication and a range of industrial um, implementations. So some of the work that we've been doing in IMR, I hope you can see these, uh, these images. And um, this is the optical inspection station that we've been working on. So this is essentially um, taking an asset, using an optical inspection through computer vision and machine learning to make sure that there's uh, no faults within the device itself. So this is a proven data architecture that's used to scale the integration of assets. Multiple assets can be connected into a single server, communicate with one another. Legacy devices can communicate with, with new devices that are implemented within the factory floor. 
um, and there's a full coverage of information sharing between devices. So I'd encourage you, if you go to the Irish Manufacturing Research YouTube page, that there's some good videos on the pilot factory and the pilot line that's been implemented within IMR itself. Um, I'd encourage you to, to ask questions and to actually come to IM, IMR ourselves and have a look at the work we've been doing and see is there any possible implementations that you can use within your own business architectures. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer them and I'll pack, pass it back to Gary. Then. Thanks very much, Martin. There's two questions that might be a bit similar from Paul Jeffers asks, can you comment on the use of MQTT as well as OPC UA and the pros and cons of the communication protocols? And Michael Power asks, uh, he's interested to hear in your opinion on where MQTT fits into this architecture. Also, how 5G will impact the connectivity options for IIoT? Yeah, those are great questions. So for MQTT, we, in a previous implementation of OPC UA, we used an IMR. We used a combination of OPC UA and MQTT, again, to bridge the gap between the IT layer and OT layer. We essentially thought it would be best not to mix the two protocols, but to actually develop the publish and subscribe mechanism within OPC UA um, so that it's, it's one single protocol infrastructure that can be used to pass information horizontally within the factory. So the advantages of MQTT are essentially encompassed within uh, OPC UA if there's a development of the uh, publish and subscribe mechanism. So Basically, a client can connect, it can publish its information, and other clients that are connected to the server can uh, receive that information and publish their own information. So the advantages of MQTT can be used within OPC UA, but the two, the two protocols can be used together. And Industry 4 actually recommends MQTT to be used as well as OPC UA in an industrial setting. So like they're, they're both excellent choices. We decided to use OPC UA um, for this particular project. In terms of 5G, uh, OPC UA, uh, the server can be used as a wireless interface. So you can have an OPC UA server running on an embedded system on any kind of server implementation. You can have wireless uh, communication with devices. So we've actually developed the 5G network within Mullingar, uh, the IMR facility in Mullingar. So we will be incorporating 5G into further implementations in the projects. Thank you.